Hey YouTube Grunt Reviews, I have got another brown cardboard box, which if you guessed it means another Turkish shotgun to take a look at. Guys, this is going to be our unboxing and tabletop review on the STS Imports Radical NK1 Bullpup Shotgun. Guys, as always, like, subscribe, share us with your friends, drop a comment, and if you like what we're doing for you here at the channel, I've got a buy me a coffee link in the description, and let's get into it. So, without further ado, we are going to uh, jump right into this bad boy. This uh, was purchased from a uh, purchased from a local gun dealer uh, in my local area. Uh, these are running right around the five hundred dollar mark. And let's get her pulled out. So the first thing we've got a little bit of foam padding. We have got the grease bag as they always come all right and we've got the shotgun so these are available uh, in two different lengths they have a uh, 24 inch length which is going to have uh, on the end of it it's got a real long barrel shroud to it and then this is the uh, 20 inch we also do have our choke kit so we get the one choke that's in it plus the two additional and then we get our uh we get our choke wrench and we get one oh look at that we get two five round magazines and then our uh, our additional spanner wrench there and it looks like Okay, so these are the, I'm going to say, older style magazines. Um, just a regular slick slide, doesn't have the plastic on the bottom, doesn't have the, uh, doesn't have the rail mount on it. And we get our owner's manual. Get this thing out of the way. So, um, as far as these things go, um, this one does come... Uh, relatively, uh, relatively basic. The um, these radicals, these NK ones, even though it has the same part number, um, or I should say the same model, they have a, a rear charging version. There's a side charging version. Like I said, there's a 24 inch. Uh, there's the 20 inch, um, and I believe the longer ones do come with a uh, with an angled foregrip on them. Um, but overall, this is going to look very similar to, um, and I will tag you up above, this is going to look very, very similar to the uh, lower off of the SDS uh, AA, the BLP. Give you a quick view of the other side. Um, actually looks very, very similar to the, uh, to the BLP AA. Let me grab the stand and we'll uh, we'll get it up there and we'll take a closer look. All right, got her up on the stand. Uh, as always, we'll start from uh, we'll start from front to rear. Um, barrel uh, with these models, like I said, um, if you go on their website, they have a 20 and a 24 inch. The difference, obviously, being four extra inches of barrel, uh, and the 24 has the longer barrel shroud. The 20 obviously is a little bit shorter. Of course, you do get a decent set of flip-up sights that uh, do come pre-installed. Not a huge deal, but saves me from uh, tightening down a couple of screws there. Um, of course, a whole row of uh, pick rail across the top. We do have that AR-style charging handle there. So nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Very similar to like the ATI Bulldog. Um, we do have, as the Turkish shotguns uh, love to put them on there, we do have the cheek riser, kind of like the ATI Bulldog. Um, this does have a very wiggly cheek riser. Let me make sure this thing's all the way tight. It is. So it is that very loose uh, Turkish design. 
Essentially, on these Turkish guns, uh, for this cheek riser, there is two uh, sets. There's basically a one where they have a very tight rail system that holds this thing as it goes up and down that eliminates the wiggle. And then they have uh, this style that is a little bit wider. And since that screw does not crank it down all the way, um, you do get the wiggle. It is what it is. Um, I wish they would fix that or ideally remove that altogether if anyone in Turkey is listening. Um, backside, do have a nice uh, butt pad on there with, uh, actually has a decent amount of squish, more so, than, uh, more so than some of the other ones. Working our way back up here, we do have uh, M-lock slots. We've got three on this side, three on this side and we have the pick rail on the bottom. So once again, very similar to um, the SDS imports, the, the BLP uh, M12AA, uh, almost exactly the same lower on this as well too, even has the uh, textured fingers, I guess, if you will, built into, uh, built into the grip. Does use a cross bolt style safety. And then, uh, obviously, as you could tell from the, uh, from the charging handle, does use AR-style controls. So we have our mag release on the right side. We have our bolt catch on the left side. Um, this one does not feature an ambidextrous mag release, um, but the 24-inch uh, model that I have seen does have an ambi mag release. My best guess, um, going off of my experience with these, uh, they have essentially an AA and an AB version, or old and new, first gen, second gen, whatever you would like to call it. Um, and this is still built on that, we'll call it Gen 1 architecture for the purposes of this. Um, so same lower, a little bit different upper on it. Uh, of course, they do give you that kind of diamondy looking texture. Um, Kind of looks like a tread plate on a car trailer. But outside of that, everything is, is relatively standard uh, to the uh, Turkish world on these. So I do, like the, um, I do like the little bit of extra barrel venting you get up here. I don't think you're going to be uh, ripping through as many shots um, as some of these manufacturers think you do or you're really going to need all that extra venting, but it really does look kind of nice. It's very aesthetically pleasing. I am uh, gonna run and grab my handy dandy trigger gauge here. And guys, as always, I've got the Lyman digital trigger gauge and we are going to see how this trigger performs. So action, first impression, uh, action does feel pretty smooth in this thing. Um, as you can see from my hands, uh, this one did come uh, a little bit gooey, if you will. Um, so this one's got a little bit more packing oil in it than some of the other ones I've messed with, but let's get in there and get a pull on it. All right, first break. Nine pounds, six ounces. Second break, six pounds, 13 ounces. Wonder if that first one was a fluke. Let's find out. Third pull, seven pounds, seven ounces. So let's get one more just for averaging purposes here. And six pounds, 15.5 ounces. Um, doing some rough math in my head. Um, I'd have to break out the boots, or take off the boots to use my toes to count as well. Um, but roughly seven and a half to eight pounds, if we count that, that first pull at nine, 
Uh, I'm going to say overall probably closer to seven or eight. Overall feel of this trigger, very notchy. You can actually hear the springs moving. Um, lots, of, uh, the, lots of spring popping, if you will. You do get a firm wall and then a break. Now let me try that one more time. Fingers are a little greasy here. So nice audible reset. Back on that wall and break. So really once you get through all the notchiness prior to the wall, the trigger actually does break uh, relatively cleanly. Uh, so there we go. And a little bit of just a hair of creep. There's the wall. Maybe a little more creep. Break. And guys, I will also say there may be some goo in there. We'll go ahead and check that out. Um, but overall, the trigger does not feel terrible. Definitely feels very, uh, very serviceable, very usable. So overall, not bad. Pretty much in line with a lot of the uh, with a lot of the other Turkish. Turkish offerings. Something I, I will point out, this uh, charging handle, the actual release on it, this thing's kinda long and kinda tight. Once again, getting a, getting a little nitpicky there, but you really have to get your hand on it to get it out of that hole, to get it back. Um, kinda like I, I touched on with the, uh, with the ATI Bulldog, um, uh, the the AR style charging handle, I don't really like them on this. Um, and for the purpose of if if we're on here and we have some kind of uh, some kind of issue where we do need to manually cycle the bolt, when you pull that thing back, it is almost to your face. Um, not too much different than an AR, but that is also an AR annoyance as well. Um, do wish that. They had made this one a side charger like a lot of the other ones. Um, but the advantage is, is you, it does make this 75% ambidextrous. Basically, the only thing that is not ambi is the, uh, is the magazine release and the bolt, um, bolt catch. So you still have to go to uh, opposite sides of the shotgun to make it happen. Um, fit and feel in the hand, really overall not bad. Um, pretty well balanced. This actually feels a little bit lighter than some of the other ones. Not earth-shatteringly lighter, but it definitely feels to have just a little bit less weight to it. And this particular one seems to be real well balanced right there, um, right there at the back of the grip. So very easy to maneuver and adjust, um, move around at the range, have some fun. So first thoughts, overall not bad. Um, would be a little bit nicer if this was, uh, maybe had some of the upgraded features, kind of like the, uh, the M12 AB. Um, but yeah, usable, serviceable. So um, price-wise, like I said, this thing does run for about 500. Would be a little nicer to see this 350 to 400 range. They do give you the extra mag with this though. I don't think that's worth 200, but it definitely does help at the range. Um, just because I always get asked, these will take the huge 19 round banana mags from uh, Rock Island Armory. Uh, they will also accept the 20 round drums, uh, the smaller 10 round sticks, and then they come with, uh, they come with five rounders. So hope this gives you a, a, a little bit more info on these. I will be out at the range hopefully this weekend. It will be July 4th and I will be freedoming, uh, with, some, uh, freedoming with some shotguns. Um, guys, I appreciate your time watching this. As always, stay safe, train hard.